Okay, folks, turn 35. <clears throat> uh, in terms of what's going on this turn, uh, we bounced a scout off of Zox, found some province defense there. We also hit Stone Heavens and found actually quite a bit of province defense here. He's beefed this province defense up significantly. So he's got over 30 barbarians. And the reason he did this, of course, is because uh, his army is on the way. So my slave prince did get away. He got attacked a few times by barbarians, but didn't, I think, get damaged. So he managed to run. I uh, lost my units, of course, but eh, who cares? But the Fomorian army... Oh, Lord, he coming. Uh, he's not actually very chungus, though. He's not very big. About 90 units. This, of course, does not show the Nemedians, of which he has some. So this is actually about 100, maybe 110 units, containing a significant number of Nemedian warriors and a couple of Nemedian sorceresses, as well as three Fomorian kings. Now, the plus side, I don't think he has any gems, really, and he doesn't have a good place to restock on gems, because this is the closest fort. <clears throat> However, he is also probably going to bring down all these Furbolg warriors and stuff, so he's going to have a lot more troops than I do. So, in other words, my troops are going to have to be uh, just water elementals. Just straight up water elementals. Which, fortunately, I can actually do, because I have teleported in, I can has brains, and uh, all your troops are belong to us. I'm act so... At this point, I kind of have to make a call. Do I want to stay here for one more turn and then retreat? Uh, and let him retake his capital and then move back in to trap everyone inside? Would that help me in any way? Or, I mean, that would give me time to bring up more troops of my own. I've got about uh, 75 troops here. And I've got about another 40-some troops here. Uh, so that would allow me to bring in, you know, about another 150 chaff. Or do I stand my ground, teleport in even more Mind Lords, and bet on being able to overwhelm the enemy with Water Elementals? Because that's what I'd be betting on. Uh, in terms of troops, I just don't have any. But, 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 if I teleport in more Mind Lords carrying all of my other Water Gems and distribute them, I may be able to churn out enough Water Elementals to just straight up Water Elemental everyone to death. And so it's kind of a question of whether I want to take that gamble. Um, on the balance, I think I do. On the balance, I think I do. So, we're going to get Rafflecopter. We're going to have him hold seven water gems. We're going to get Oh Really. We're going to have him hold seven water gems. And both of them... We're going to give you a, an amulet of the fish. We're going to give you an amulet of the fish, and we're going to have both of you teleport to Fomoria. The other way to do this would be to have a couple of them teleport to Troll Peaks and cut off the reinforcements here. So it's a question of whether I want to have the climactic battle with all the units involved or not. I think the climactic battle with all the units involved is actually a pretty good idea, because I'll be able to have my Foul Vapors active. Um, and with my Foul Vapors, I don't think he has a good counter to that. Um, he has some Nature Mages, but only Nature 1. And Nature 1 Mages cannot cast Poison Ward, because Poison Ward requires a gem and is a Nature 2 spell. So he can't make himself make his army immune to foul vapors. I pretty much can. Um, I don't have many troops left. My mages are all kind of packed up in this space. I've got my, my nature mages spaced out a little bit. Um, and so they should be able to pretty much become immune to foul vapors. Now, unfortunately, uh, this second wave of mages who aren't carrying any gems um, and their troops are going to be one turn behind the action, if these troops move out especially. But these two armies can converge on me in two turns. These armies will take three. So, the reason to... That would be the reason to move out and hit Troll Peaks this turn with a bunch of... Uh, with my Mind Lords. Just to spam out Water Elementals and try to overwhelm this force. Uh, the reason I... Uh, I'm hesitant about that because I suspect that this force will cast a lot of Swarm. We'll just spend his Nature Gems casting Swarm if I attack it. And Swarm could potentially kill my Mind Lords. Um... 
even with them summoning water elementals, the swarm could do it, and the swarm would disrupt their casting, so they probably wouldn't get all that many water elementals off. So that's my worry. My worry is that I get off a couple rounds of water elementals, and then I'd be buried in bugs, and like the six or eight water elementals that I was able to summon would be swarmed under by the 70 or so units that he has here, of which the majority are Furbolg warriors and the various bugs, and that I would lose like four or five mind lords fighting that battle. I would rather have the fight right here with all my gems, all my mages in a huge ball, uh, spamming out water elementals and casting foul vapors and dropping astral spells and just generally being a huge pain in the ass. Uh, the long dead, I'm not concerned about. Uh, the Fomorian kings will be a little bit of an issue, but I think I can handle it. And um, I could, actually, I'll tell you what, I could go down alteration and drop a ton of swarm myself because I have 500 research points. Will Thaumaturgy 6 help me at all, actually? It'll give me Enslave Mind, but I don't really need that. Um, hmm. Charm Animal won't help me either. Control the Dead actually might be kind of a hilarious way to turn his, his Long Dead against him. I don't have many Death Mages, though. Um, Paralyze, Vengeance of the Dead... Vengeance of the Dead is a spell that I could start chucking at this army. Because both Yodog and my new Mind Lord Truth coming out of her well have the paths to cast it. I'll tell you what, I am going to do that. It's not a spell that a lot of people uh, really, really guard themselves against because it's not super common. Like, Astral Death is not a super common cross path, but let's just throw a couple Vengeance of the Dead at this army and see if we can get rid of one of his Fomorian Kings. I don't know if his Fomorian Kings actually have a lot of kills. Um, if they don't, then it won't do anything. If they do, then it might take one of them out of the picture, which would be very, very nice. Uh, Fomorian Kings... Fomorian Kings do not natively have magic weapons, so the Spirits of the Dead can actually be highly effective against them. Now, they do have high native magic resistance, so two casts are unlikely, relatively speaking, to penetrate their magic resistance, but I do get a couple of tries, so I'll be able to cast it a total of four times at him. Um, actually, I'll be able to cast it a total of six times. So let's just, let's just see. Let's see, it's worth, in my case, since I have pretty healthy Astral Pearl income, it's worth spending, like, 10 or 12 pearls to take a shot here. Um, and I'll actually slap, I'll have you cast it too. We're just gonna, we're just gonna go all in on the Vengeance of the Dead. We're gonna drop a whole bunch of Vengeance of the Dead on this army and see if we can't snipe out a commander or two. Um, like I said, the only commanders that are likely to really have any kills are the Fomorian Kings. Um, unless his Prophet is in this army, but killing his Prophet would also be fairly useful, to be honest. If nothing else, we might be able to kill a leader. If his Prophet is here and had been leading expansion parties, then, um, he's likely to have, you know, some kills, and also he's likely to have control over some of the army in terms of leadership. Spreading this army out and delaying it by part of a turn would also be worth quite a bit. Uh, if we look at the Hall of Fame, he doesn't have anybody in the Hall of Fame. He has no heroes. Almost all Everyone in the Hall of Fame is an Eagle King, so Calum is thugging his Eagle Kings, and you can see here, he is indeed thugging his Eagle Kings. Um, so he's got a Storm Spool, Girdle of Might, Frostbrand, and a Weightless Tower Shield, so defense skill 24, not bad, plus he can misform himself and has heroic toughness. This is pretty, Eagle Kings are pretty expensive for thugs, but, uh, I mean, it seems to be working out for him. This guy is, he's thugged the hell out of this guy, Blizzworlds. Wow. I would have done that myself. Galestorm Herdsbird with a Coral Blade. Yeah, I'm not sure about all this. This seems pretty expensive. You see, Stormbringer Nielsen uh, got killed here. Solus Mundus has Iron Will. That's a pretty good one. Saras Gale. So yeah, he's he's probably he's PD rating with Eagle Kings. That's what Calum is doing. That's uh, that's that's clever. It's it seems to be working pretty well for him. He's holding off a. Uh, well, he was holding off 
Er, it looks like Raphabolia is, the siege of Raphabolia has been broken. Hmm. But he's raided away a lot of Ur down here. And he might also be fighting Helheim? Interesting. Helheim's going in against Arkham's Folly again. Uh, yeah, it looks like, it looks like Calum is probably at war with both Helheim and Ur. Uh, and Therados is moving in against Fomoria since I'm distracting them here, which is perfectly reasonable. Makes a lot of sense from their perspective. Uh, I imagine they have peace with Calum, because uh, Calum really doesn't want another war while they're already fighting all this. So we'll see how that ends up as well. Um, yeah, overall pretty happy with all this. I'm I'm doing I'm doing okay, and I think I can win this fight. Like I said, I'll teleport in a couple more mind lords. I'll teleport in a third. Um, I'll bring in either Yo Dog or Truth coming out of her well next turn because I'll have another amulet of the fish next turn. And actually, uh, Badger Badger is taking over uh, enslaving trolls, but I think instead I will have him forge me another Amulet of the Fish. What do you mean I don't have enough gems? Oh, I don't have any water gems. Okay, I'm gonna alchem I'm gonna alchemize up some water gems, which is not normally a thing I would be doing at this point, but um, I'm gonna do that just so I can forge a second. Uh, Amulet of the Fish, and so next turn I'll be able to double down and bring in two more. I'll be able to bring in Yodog and Truth coming out of her well. Or possibly, yeah, because Orrithi and Rafflecopter are both going already. So I'll be able to bring in two more Mind Lords for a total of six to help with the Siege of Fomoria, and I'll just, uh, I will just shit out a colossal stupendous number of Water Elementals. Um, yeah, and that'll be the plan. I will, I will drown the world in Water Elementals and Poison. And I think that should be enough to defeat Fomoria's last Gasp army here. Because they'll have, like, less than 200 units. I'll have... Uh, I'm not sure how many Water Elementals, but it will be quite a lot. Uh, and actually, I'll tell you what, you know what else I should do? I'm actually going to alchemize a ton of my Earth Gems, because I do not have a lot of Earth, of Earth Mages. And a ton of my Fire Gems, because right now I don't have hardly any use for Fire Gems. And I'm going to churn out another 25 water gems, let's say. And I'm going to bring them on over. So we are going to... Oh, baby, we are going to crap out some water elementals. It is going to be Water Elemental City. Uh, it will be Water Elemental O'Clock in Water Elemental Town. There will be water elementals from hell to breakfast. Uh, and they will just punch the absolute gobshit out of... All of these Furbolg, all of these Fomorians, all of these Nemedians, all of these Skeletons, all of these other things that end in N. Uh, and I think we should be the proud owners of Fomoria in a few more turns. So, uh, also of course, uh, Badger, 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 Badger has arrived. And uh, yeah, he's right now he's just forging an amulet of the fish. So two amulets per turn, pretty good. Um, He is Astral 7, so I can slap a... Slap a crystal coin on him, that'll make him Astral 8. And with that, he can cast most of the Astral spells. Now, the Astral spells that he cannot cast, uh, Astral 8, he can cast Master and Slave. At Astral 8, he will be able to teleport Master and Slave. Um, what he can't cast at Astral 8 is uh, Wish. If I recall correctly, Wish requires, yes, Astral 9. So I will have to empower him or something to get him up to Astral 9. Or, actually cheaper and more easy, uh, he'll have to forge himself a Ring of Sorcery before he can cast Wish. But at, Ar at Astral 8, he can cast Arcane Nexus. So, 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 I'll tell you another good game that I know. Um, once we hit Enchantment level 9, he will teleport himself over to my Enchantment 40% discount site. And he will lay down a stupendous, apocalyptic, destructive arcane nexus, and steal everyone's gems to make Relay the preeminent power over all. I will need more gems, however, before that happens. And it'll be a while. It certainly will. I only have 10 per turn right now, so at that rate I would need to save for arcane nexus alone for 15 turns without spending any pearls. Um, I definitely, definitely need more astral income before I try doing that, but uh, we're doing okay. And if I take Fomoria... Grab some of the Fomorian land on shore, and then uh, hunt around for another victim. Probably, 
after I take Fomoria... It's probably... Well, it'll depend. It will really depend. Uh, it might be Therados' turn after that. Uh, Therados has some pretty valuable real estate, albeit it gets less and less valuable every turn they own it because their Dominion kills the population. But they do have a lot of gem income on some of their provinces. Like over here, Clam Field, Underwater Cliff, Living Sediment, Black Coral Reef. That's a really cool province in terms of gem income. Uh, Telkinus also is great gem income. Uh, over here we've got four death gems per turn in Sea of Woe. That's amazing. Um, and of course, like I said, the longer I leave it, the less population there is remaining in these provinces. So, I, from that perspective, you kind of want to conquer them early. Uh, Therados' forts actually protect a certain amount of population from the pop kill, so there will always be some population in these provinces, in all these provinces they forted. But, you know, we'll kind of see where it goes. Um, ghosts are good siege defense, so I will need a lot of siege chaff in order to take these forts down. And I may, to be honest, I may just never kill Therados if I can win another way. Um, if Therados maintains their non-aggression pact with me, I might go ahead and maintain it myself, because the fact of the matter is, at this point already, magically speaking, I am, uh, I think perfectly capable of trash canning Therados underwater. Um, I think I've got the I've got the astral magic, the water magic, the various cross paths. Um, I can spam with a little bit of research. Um, I can wipe out the ghosts by spamming uh, wither bones, which works perfectly well on ghosts. Hilariously enough, it's magic damage, so ethereality doesn't bother it. It's area of effect six plus. It's armor negating damage, so that will annihilate ghosts very very quickly. Um, I have nature magic, so once I hit alteration seven. Is it Alteration? No, it's Enchantment 7, isn't it? Yeah, it's Enchantment 7. Once I hit Enchantment 7, which is not too far away, um, I could throw up Serpent's Blessing and become immune to Foul Vapors, which is one of, which is one of Therados' big tricks. Uh, and I can, of course, spam out Water Elementals, which can hold the Ghost Army at bay for 7 million years underwater, and just grind out a win without too much trouble, I think. Um... If I need more death, I can recruit Aboleths, or more pertinently, I can recruit Abodai in the capital, which are also good because their upkeep is low. I just, I'm just i just not recruiting them because they compete with Mind Lords, and Mind Lords are a lot more valuable, in my opinion. Uh, and that reminds me, I should actually churn out some more. Not Loboguard. Well, yes, Loboguard for now. Loboguard are good for invading the surface world. So, that's where we are, that's where we stand. I think we're doing fine. Um, if not Therados, then the next logical victim, and in fact more logical than Therados in a lot of ways, is Ulm. Because Ulm is super, super vulnerable to astral magic. Um, this army is looks huge and scary, but hitting these guys with like Enslaved Mind, Soul Slay, similar astral spells, completely bypasses all the long dead, and will mainly target the weak-willed Ulmish units. And if I have a lot of uh, Astral Mages, a lot of Astral Mages spamming like Enslave Mind at an Ulmish army can cause a surprising amount of havoc, because of course every unit they mind control turns on the enemy and gets killed, but sometimes takes another enemy with it. In the ideal case, that can add up to like effectively two kills per turn for random ass Slave Mages, and if they cast it three or four times, it works out. Especially if they happen to hit a whole bunch of people who are all right in the same area and they survive for a round or two, and then you add more by enslaving more around them. I don't know. Seems like it could work. I've never done this relay. Um, or, of course, Mind Burn works pretty well to just blow up Ulmish heads. Just pop, 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 pop. Um, yeah, so I think Ulmish armies I can take out pretty effectively if I have to. Also, of course, there's Water Elementals. Once again, Water Elementals ain't bad. Um, or... I can... There's various things that I can do to counter Ulm. And of course, Wither Bones works well to disintegrate all those Ulmish, uh, those Ulmish undead legions. And uh, Foul Vapors. Foul Vapors works very well on Ulm because all of their troops are weedy humans. And so all, if you can just stay alive, which is kind of a tall order sometimes against hordes of dual-wielding axemen, but if you can stay alive for long enough, Foul Vapors will delete all of the Ulmish units and also all of their mages unless they're prepared for it. Which, as we saw here against Fomoria, 
people sometimes aren't prepared for foul vapors out of relay. Like, it doesn't... I don't know. He just wasn't... He just wasn't thinking about that. He was thinking, oh, relay. Water magic and astral magic. So, water elementals. Um, and he was not thinking about foul vapors, which he really should have been, because... Nature 1 is good enough to do it out of a communion. In any case, that's the turn. I'll see y'all in turn 36. I think things are going okay. Okay, indeed. In terms of score graphs, um, province-wise, I am staying about level, not really expanding in terms of provinces right now. Uh, Agartha has actually dipped a little bit. Calum is now on top. Um, in terms of income, in terms of income, I'm still up there. I'm still up there tied with Agartha for first, so I'm doing fine on that front. Um, my forts, I could use a couple more forts. Hopefully I'll take one from Vimoria here, of course. And in terms of gem income, I could also be better. My gem income is well down from the uh, the rarefied heights of Agartha, who is probably making like 20 gems more than me or something, something ridiculous like that. Yeah, probably 20 or 25 gems per turn more than I am. That is a mismatch that is hard to overcome sometimes. Um... You know, he's got three air gems per turn out of Silverham. If I ever do go to war against Agartha, of course, I'll be able to snap up his coasts pretty easily, but then the retaliation will probably push me right back underwater. It'll kind of depend. Um, Agartha has taken a citadel here in Cliff Coast uh, from, I think, I think this was spawned by the City of a Thousand Wonders, and uh, has also broken the Fort of Glitter, Glimmering Fields. Uh, Agartha was saying something about having lost a battle this turn, but Hinnom having spent a ton of gems, it might have been right there. And Hinnom is just going down. There's there's no way out of this for them. Um, they've been completely separated by Rus, so they've just got a couple of provinces over here, and uh, they are. It is definitely uh, Hinnom's time to die. It's the hour of wolves for them, but uh, they're going down fighting. Like respect. They're uh, they're making them pay for it. So in any case, I will see y'all in turn thirty six. All right, it's turn 36, and here's what we're doing. We've got these two Fomorian armies closing in on us, and basically what I'm thinking is it doesn't matter if I sit here and break down Fomoria's fort any longer if I get caught in a fight between these two and smushed. So, instead, my siege force is moving to Zox. Um, that's where this army has to pass through in order to get to Fomoria. So by moving to Zox, I will engage them without their support of their hundred some odd Furbolg warriors and all of their horticulturists and wolf tribe. Um, that should enable me to crush this portion of the army which contains the majority of his actual magical power. I'm um, in the form of three Fomorian kings, Knoker the prophet, and a couple of Numedian sorceresses, and then double back to engage these guys when I have my full, uh, my, my big fat stacks of Lobo guard to serve as chaff. And that's not even actually my full stacks of Lobo Guard. I've got another 50 Lobo Guard coming. Lobo Guard are cheap. Lobo Guard are cheap. There's another 40 some odd. Um Androdai. Androdai actually have really good magic leadership, which is nice. Um that's one reason why you might want them instead of sages. I'm just pumping out sages for the research right now because having tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of research will be good for me. So that is the plan. Those monsters are just kind of chilling out for the nonce. And we're not moving any more troops from here yet, although we are spamming out a few more of those guys. Um, Anquanaki, yeah, I actually just stay here for the moment. I don't need you to be mind vesseled yet. Uh, but uh, Yo Dog and Truth coming out of her well are both teleporting down to Zox. Zox has province defense, but I think to. Uh, Mind Lord spamming water elementals will be able to wipe that province defense out without too much trouble. And uh, by doing that, they should actually clear the province before this army arrives, so this army won't spend any gems. Then, this force will meet us there, and we will have one, two, three, four, five, six Mind Lords, plus the communion will drop foul vapors, we'll have our poison resistance going off, um, and we should, should obviously be able to beat this army down just with raw. Communion power and water elemental spam. After that, we should hopefully still have some gems left, since Yo Dog and Truth coming out of her well are both bringing 13 more water gems, and all of my other mind lords, I can ask brains, oh really, all your troops have belonged to us, and Rafflecopter all have six each. So we should then be able to use the gems that we have left to double back and crush this army. If not, I have another mind lord coming, 
who will obviously be given an equivalently stupid name, and he can teleport over carrying some more gems. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have enough air gems to forge another amulet of the fish right at the moment, so that'll make it a little bit difficult. Um, I could also teleport Badger, 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 Badger around, but his only real combat ability is Astral 7, so he needs to wait. He will come into his own in the late game, when he teleports on top of armies and casually casts the Time Stop, Master, and Slave combination uh, with no setup time, which will be hilarious. So, that's my plan. We're going to try to catch that army down here, smash it in Zox. Um, we'll take Stone Heavens as well, and then we'll capture Fomori. In fact, in fact... I'm strongly tempted to send this army to just attack Stone Heavens. Um, I'm not doing it just because I don't know if he's going to sit here and wait for this army. Because, well, no, he won't sit here and wait. He's going to move on. I just don't... Mm, I don't want to waste these guys. They're not good. Um, and so sending them in with minimal, like, not really any magical support against the Barbarian PD he's got here. Because he's got a lot of Barbarian PD here. So it just seems like a waste. So... Yeah, I think we'll just stick with this. We'll snap up Stone Heavens in a little bit. Um, the Breather, the Reprieve that we have bought in Niflheim, they're putting to good use. They're expanding back out, reclaiming some of their territories. Um, that Jotun Werewolf and their Skin Shifters are taking back over territories that have been lost. Um, and they're they're starting to starting to reclaim a little bit of, a little bit of land. Um, they are still under attack by Pangaea and Tianchi, so I anticipate they're still not long for this world. But they're doing okay. And down here, Hinnom is just stubbornly, stubbornly holding on. Um, this fort has been cracked, but this fort actually has not. It's only got a few sacreds guarding it. If, if Hinnom has anything here, he should just break out instantly and try and kill those sacreds while they're kind of isolated. Um, otherwise, he's just kind of doomed. We've got uh, a lot of gems here, as is common in throne provinces. I really need to sight search that province also. So, I'll tell you what, can you cast... Uh, Akashic Knowledge is so expensive, but like the one place where you can really justify casting Akashic Knowledge sometimes is Thrones. Because Thrones have a much higher chance of having magic sites than anywhere else. Um, I'll tell you what though, I'm just gonna send... Holber. We'll teleport Holber over. Uh, he needs Astral 3 to teleport, so we will give him uh, this crystal coin that Muthalan was holding. We'll teleport him over and sight search the province for a bunch more magic sites, because we've only sight searched here for Astral and Holy, level 1. So Holber will be able to sight search it for, you know, Fire, Water, and Earth. And then we'll also want to get a Nature Mage up here to sight search it for Nature. Um, we did alchemize some gems in order to get those water gems to, uh, attack Fomoria with. Uh, so I think, what I'm hoping will happen here, as I said, is this army comes down here aiming to pincer us in Fomoria. And I've been trying to count map move. I don't think this army, this army can't get to relay, to, to Fomoria in one turn. So, they'll move down here. This army should just sit here, waiting. And I'm thinking, they'll just sit here waiting, this army will come down here, and then they'll try to attack me together. So that's why I'm making this move. Because since this province is empty, I can teleport to it safely. Um, if I teleported here, then my teleporting mind lords would have to fight this whole army by themselves. But by going here, I could teleport to this province safely, have those reinforcements available, and then my whole army with all of its magical power can fight the most powerful fraction of the remaining Fomorian army and crush it. And then this force won't move in this turn, because they're waiting on their reinforcements, probably. Um, if they do move in this turn, then they'll take Fomoria back, but that's okay. Then I'll just move all my mages right back, and we'll be able to crush them without, you know, any trouble. Now, this is a battle in which Foul Vapors might not be ideal, but I might as well cast it. I have the gems available. I have the Poison Wards scripted to go off. I should be able to protect pretty much everybody. Um, it won't really be a problem. And... Um, and, you know, it'll do extra damage. Now, it will kill off some of my chaff, but my chaff are scripted to hold an attack, and the Poison Ward should hit most of them, question mark. So, I don't anticipate super heavy casualties. That said, you just have to anticipate casualties in a battle like this. Um, I might lose Slave Mages, 
But you know what? If I lose slave mages, I lose slave mages. That's okay. They're not contributing to my research or anything right now anyway. Uh, my research isn't amazing because so many of my mages are off fighting. 590 is like, eh, it's there. It's something. But it's not, uh, it's not great. As you can see, Therados is actually beating me pretty comprehensively in research. So is Ulm. And... Who's that tan line? Er. So those three are the research leaders right now. I'll be able to compete with them once I finish this war and have more of my mages researching intensely. Uh, but for now, I am perfectly happy to be fighting this war. So, we'll fight in Zox, and then we'll just double back to Fomoria with what's left, which should be most of the army. I don't anticipate this army can beat me at all, especially because Fomoria's research is not nearly as good as mine. They're as far below me as I am below the current leader, who is Ulm. So, given that my research, I have two level 5s and one level 6, that probably means they have, like, they might have the two level 5s but not the level 6, or they might have one level 6 and very little else. Uh, but we'll, we'll just kind of have to see what they've researched. I mean, I'm trying to think of what the worst case scenario for me would be. The worst case scenario for me here would probably be uh, Rigor Mortis. But if he drops Rigor Mortis, I mean, Water Elementals aren't affected by that much, because they're zero encumbrance chassis. And so, they'll still be able to fight, and that will just make the battle longer and slower and give me more of a chance to murder his mages with Foul Vapors, so I don't think I'm going to really have to worry about this. In any case, that's pretty much the turn. Um, beyond that, we did cast Vengeance of the Dead. Um, Yo Dog succeeded, out of all of them. But unfortunately, it hit Kanoker, who is the Prophet, and so Kanoker got off a bunch of really key banishments as the undead were charging towards him. The Decree of the Underworld is a pretty good one. So he cleared off a lot of them just with banishes before they ever made contact. You can see he got like six or seven rounds of banishing. And that wiped out probably about half of the dead ones. Um, once the, the dead ones got into melee with him, they did okay in the sense that they just... I mean, he was killing them, obviously, but he wasn't killing them super, super quickly. Um, they weren't doing any damage whatsoever. I mean, he has a vine shield, and he's, you know, mist-formed. So they're not hurting him, uh, but there weren't enough to turn timer, turn timer him. I can say words, I promise. Um, he, every now and then he cast a spell, and the spell would kill a few of them. Dust to dust wipes out squares at a time. So you really need, like, a hundred or a couple hundred of these guys in order to take him out. Now, of course, since he's killed them all, he does actually have over a hundred kills. So if this spell hits him again... He'll have to fight over a hundred of them, which might do, because that would be, you know, that would be another 10, 14 squares of these bad boys surrounding him right now. And I'm not sure but that he wouldn't rout from turn timer in the time that he would take to fight all of those. So you know what? Just speculatively, just because I can, I am going to have Chunud cast it again. We are going to hit this army with one more Vengeance of the Dead. Um, I don't have another coin, I don't think. Yeah, I only forged two coins so far, so that's fine. Holberg can teleport up to Sinextro, Sight Search, and then he can forge another couple of coins while he's up there. I do have the Earth and Astral Income to support that, of course. So, that's the turn. I'll see y'all in... This is bugging out again. I don't know why this game specifically does that. None of my other games do. It happens if I'm zoomed out, I guess. Yeah, that's weird. That's very strange. If I'm zoomed out, that happens. Anyway, that was turn 36. I'll see y'all in turn 37, and we will find out how the War of Zox, the Battle of Zox, went. Take care.